It's Friday, October 11th, 2013. I'm Alex Jones, and this is an extremely important edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, the Obamacare website may be a joke, but don't laugh at the TSA. Jokes concerning security may result in your arrest. And it was unprecedented when a nuke deputy commander was relieved for cause. Now, the top nuke commander has been fired. What's going on? All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm not saying we wouldn't get our hair most, but I do say no more than 10 to 20 million killed. Tops, uh, depending on the breaks. First off tonight, two separate top nuke commanders have been removed from command in the last month following our internal sources telling us that nukes were basically dug out of secret mothballs at Dias Air Force Base in West Texas and disappeared onto the East Coast. Now, the number two commander of nuclear forces, an admiral, was removed a few weeks ago. And now the commander over all the forces, a Lieutenant General Carey, was removed today. But get this, the Associated Press leaked the information uh, out to the rest of the press and their reporters said that everyone's scared in government to even talk about the purge of generals that is going on right now. Normally, it'd be big news. You'd know why. This is getting extremely, extremely suspicious. And after the first break, Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com and StoryLink.com reporter, uh, is going to be in studio with us, breaking down all the different connections and the players. This is one of the most dangerous stories we've ever reported on. It's very, very serious, so that's coming up. But first, we live in a free country, so everything's all right. You were also reminded that any inappropriate remarks or jokes concerning security may result in your arrest. We appreciate your cooperation while these measures are in effect. That's right. If you go to InfoWars.com, you can read the story by Paul Joseph Watson. TSA loudspeakers threatens travelers with arrest for joking. So if you criticize them or if you say, hey, don't touch my junk, there's no reason to arrest you. They're going to claim disorderly conduct or that you basically pose a security threat. And, and it's all pure intimidation. Law states they can do nothing to you. The problem is behind closed doors, they may beat your brains out. It's on record that at a lot of airports, uh, folks that have been handed over to the police have ended up uh, hanging themselves uh, when their uh, handcuffs uh, were uh, cuffed behind their back. So it's a very, very serious situation. And it just shows how, hey, your First Amendment's dead. So now they have TSA checkpoints on the highways. If I criticize those, will I be arrested? Because we're such a land of the free, home of the brave. But hey, at least in the new land of the free, home of the brave, I have Obamacare. And John Rappaport wrote a really good article for Infowars.com uh, where he's asked, what's the crash really all about? And he's right. Reading his article, it really clicks with all my research. They knew months ago that the Obamacare exchange wasn't working. It's just an NSA data hub. Mike Adams, the programmers, research it as well. Mainstream media has admitted that none of it really works. It's a fraud. So why did they let the train wreck continue? Because they want to wreck the entire existing healthcare system to bring in something even more draconian that follows the entire Cloward and Piven sociological program to bankrupt uh, the country. No one's been able to sign up with it. You can get phone numbers off of it and call people that hand you over to an insurance rep who can do it. Premiums are already doubling. They're set to quadruple. In the next five years, triple by uh, 2015. But by 2017, we're talking about uh, tripling or quadrupling. Uh, the numbers are debated, but already it, it's, it's making go on the promise to make affordable care another big joke. Patriot Act the opposite of patriotism. New freedom initiative, drugging kids forcibly is the opposite of new freedom. Uh, the Affordable Care Act's a big joke. I mean, it's all just part of a huge joke on us. Like even the Obamacare term that Obama says he's proud of, Obamacare. Obama cares about me. Yeah, he cares about absolutely running over you uh, politically and consolidating power. Shifting gears, though, there's a new poll out. NBC Wall Street Journal poll says 60% say fire every member of Congress. Well, they must be talking to some idiots because there's actually some good members of the House, libertarian types. This just shows the general public has a kind of naive dissatisfaction with the power structure in the system and is now figuring out that they're not their friends. The really encouraging poll is out of Gallup showing 18 point support for the government as a whole and, and trust in the government 
and, and that's just in all demographics together. Some demographics show 5% support for the government. So there is an absolute wake up taking place across the country. But just because you've awoken doesn't mean you know exactly what's happening. But people are at least not in a coma now. They've gotten up, they're rubbing the sleep out of their eyes and looking around trying to find out exactly what's happening. Into that vacuum of waking up from zombiosis, we've got to be in there explaining to people who the globalists are, what their real plan is. Because the globalists have been so arrogant and thought they had everything cinched up. They've been very public in white papers about why they put fluoride in the water to give us cancer and sterilize us, why they teach two plus two equals five to shatter any type of mental uh, acuity or being able to judge reality. Kind of like it was declassified on Monday that the CIA for 60 years has been funding deviant art. They started out with just Pollocks that are splash paint and things, which I think is good art. But to just change the idea of what good art was with new art to get people thinking so not so that they would expand their awakening and their understanding, but so they could then be brought over into truly mentally ill and deviant art in the future. It's kind of like a fish hook has a piece of meat on it or a good worm that tastes good like a Pollock to then get you to shift over out of classical art so they can bring you down the road towards the hook that is the incredibly degenerate stuff we see on television, the sexualization of children, everything, because they need to mentally screw you up so you have no morals so that they can do whatever they want and you will accept it. Kind of like they're saying they can do backroom abortions, uh, that an auto mechanic can do abortions now in California. That's now the law. Uh, that if somebody's got a rotor rooter, they can do it. Uh, and they call that a right. They call that a, uh, a, a human right. But if I try to open up a dental office without a degree and rip teeth out, I'll be arrested. And I should be. But now, uh, if you want to just, uh, again, have anybody, anybody can do an abortion uh, in California. This is the lawlessness of these people, as long as it's anti-life. Uh, so, oh, but the New York Times calls it availability of abortions. No, they just legalized non-medical abortions uh, is what they did. Hell. A coat hanger costs you 10 cents. There you go. So that's what's happening out in California. And, and they know how to make it look normal and good and like a fun idea. Shifting gears, Google's Chrome cache exposed uh, your personal data. Like everything Google puts out, it's got back doors for them to use the data. So these aren't security flaws. These are features of the NSA privately owned hacker groups that run Google, the black hat hackers par excellence. Uh, that are gang raping your privacy. Just like the head of Facebook said famously that his users that trusted him were dumb effers. Well, it turns out that Zuckerberg has now bought up all the houses around him, the other $20 million houses, uh, so that no one can look at him and so he has privacy. Just like Schmidt, the head of Google, says you have no privacy, but he makes his girlfriends wear bags over their heads like they're Michael Jackson children. Uh, so uh, there you go. And it's also come out now that Google plans to sell users endorsements, whether you like it or not. If you're using Google and they have your ID, they're going to say, hey, Bill Johnson uh, likes poop videos. You know, uh, so come on over to our site where you can see people doing Jackson Pollock projectile pooping on the wall because uh, uh, John Doe really likes it. I mean, I'm sorry, but those are the new Google ads. I'm not, everybody's laughing at the control room. Or, I mean, let's say, let's, I mean, let's not say something embarrassing. Let's just say you're shopping for herpes medication or something. And they say, hey, uh, you know, Tim Johnson, just made up name, uh, he loves our herpes medication. He's been reordering it for three years from the online pharmacy. Or uh, how about we say something like, hey, you know, uh, Mike Johnson, it's another random name. Uh, you know, he's been purchasing. Well, just imagine. I think we'll just leave it at that. And that's the New York Times. And the New York Times is kind of like the other New York Times article where they're like, yeah, abortions are more available. You know, you can run over a woman with a car. It's all right to get rid of the baby. You can sh shoot her. And it's all right as long as it gets rid of the baby. I mean, that's pretty much what they're saying. And they call it opening it up for, for more availability. And that's how the New York Times makes it sound. Google sets plan to sell users endorsements of what you buy, whether you like it or not. Oh boy, you gotta love that one. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we come back,
uh, the, uh, who is this twit, the lead singer of uh, Pearl Jam? Uh, he's got all these armed guards and people, but he says he'd like to do violent things to you if you own a gun to protect yourself. So we'll come back and talk about just an absolute piece of trash. Stay with us. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Your right to self-defense is a God-given civil right. And it allows the little guy who's outnumbered to protect their family, their friends, their home. Crime is down more than 49% in the last 20 years, the Justice Department admits, because of increased gun ownership. The areas that have the highest crime rates are places where the guns have been taken. But my issue here is that Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam has the nerve to have all these armed bodyguards on record, former soldiers, and he comes out and says that he's so angry that he almost wishes bad things to happen to people that own guns. Well, listen here, scumbag. Not everybody's worth $100 million like you and lives in armored compounds with gates around them and has armed bodyguards. And I'm sick of rich people with armed bodyguards like Piers Morgan saying that we shouldn't be able to protect ourselves and our family. And it's sick. And I'm boycotting Pearl Jam. It's disgusting. Get back in the real world, punk. Stop trying to take our rights, you jerk. Get rid of your bodyguards before you have the nerve to talk to us like that. Now, I'm a little bit angry. Here's a satirical piece that Leanne McAdoo just shot. Thanks for that free health care, Barry. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. You just caught me worshiping at my altar. I love Obama, and I love Pearl Jam almost as much, and I really love Eddie Vedder. And he says, we need stricter gun laws in America, and I agree with him. He just wants us to be safer, like Chicago. They have the toughest gun laws in the country. And granted, they were just counted as the murder capital of the U.S. because, of course, only the uh, criminals have access to the guns and citizens can't protect themselves. But still, Eddie Vedder said, 90% of Americans want tougher gun laws. It's probably more like 47%, but who's counting, you know? Ooh, maybe we could confiscate all the guns from law-abiding citizens and then send them over to arm the Syrian rebels like Obama wanted to do. He's so smart. Now, never mind that we're going to be aligning ourselves with Al-Qaeda. Obama had to do that in order to appease his masters. And we should listen. 
because Eddie Vedder doesn't like violence. He just wishes it upon people who like guns. He's not being a hypocrite. He's just really, really rich. He needs armed bodyguards, just like billionaire Bloomberg, you know, because they're gods. We don't need guns. We are just peons. We're the bewildered herd, and we're just supposed to be passive spectators. But the really brilliant thing that Eddie said was that the Constitution is antiquated, and he is right. Back in the day, the Patriots used muskets and muzzle-loading rifles to fight tyranny. So why should it be any different for us? Who cares if now the government and our local law enforcement are arming themselves with war machines to police the streets? We just don't need that here. We no longer live in a democracy. We live under a dictatorship. And here is your tyrannical leader. You will worship him. And just to make sure all of you gun-toting patriots are fully propagandized, Eddie Vedder. Give Obama all your guns so he can do what he wants to. Demo, democide, it's what the dictator wants to do to you. I get so mad at these gun owners that don't turn in all their guns. I forgot, oh, even though the FBI statistics show a 40% drop in violent crime, I almost wish bad things to happen to them. We need to get angry. We need to let people like Eddie Vedder know that they're disgusting that they are absolute tyrants. The system wants our guns to enslave us. Bottom line, Vetter, you got protection, let us have ours. You are such a hypocrite. Look in the mirror. If anybody out there needs to have bad things happen to them, then it's you and you should do it to yourself, not wish it on other people that you wish were disarmed, you piece of filth. Now let's go to this next piece, dealing with the TSA tyranny taking over this country. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Well, leave it to the TSA not to make your day. The abomination protocol is non-exclusive to age. A three-year-old was recently harassed by the TSA. His mother, Renee Bergeron, told Yahoo about her youngest child, Apollo, who suffers from a rare heart defect being harassed by the TSA. She said, I walked right up to the first agent and told her my son is tube fed and this cooler has formula and medical supplies in it. But instead, the TSA agent put the bag through the x-ray machine and did not give a heads up to the next agent. That's when the agent at the machine freaked out. At that point, they surrounded me and began treating me like a suspect. Now, you have to watch what you say, as we reported on Infowars.com. At George Bush International Airport, they tell you that you have to watch what you say or you might be detained. And it's true, they will detain you if they don't like what you say. They did this to a relative of mine two weeks ago, and he boarded a plane loaded his luggage, sat down, and then all of a sudden they stopped loading passengers and two TSA agents came on board and removed him from the plane. Now that held up the flight, upset quite a few of the other passengers, and he wasn't told what exactly he was being detained for, except he was not going to fly out that night. Now, he's a senior citizen, so obviously they don't discriminate in age if they're harassing three-year-olds and senior citizens. But needless to say, United called the next day and I spoke with them. They were trying to get him a flight out the next day, but it was too late because he had already decided to take a car and drive home. But what are you supposed to do when the TSA detains you and says you're not going to fly out? Do they seriously expect you to just obey? Uh, not. So help fight the tyranny. Sign up for PrisonPlanet.tv today and give your username and password to up to 10 people. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Tyrant Jam wants our guns, at least the lead singer does. He's worried about individuals having pea shooters. I wonder if he's worried about the missing nuclear weapons and all the top generals getting fired. We'll cover that with Anthony Gucciardi straight ahead.
Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. It was September 3rd last month that our inside source reported to us on a secretive nuclear weapons transfer. Then Lindsey Graham came out, the senator from South Carolina, and said that the East Coast would be nuked if we didn't attack Syria. Then the second command over all nuclear forces was relieved from command. And then today, the number one in command was relieved, and this had to be leaked to the AP. This was going to be kept secret. It turns out the first admiral was removed, the second in command, the day we released that information, just hours later in the evening, this was kept secret for weeks, now this new top general has been relieved, the number one commander, and we're going to tell you who he's been replaced by. That's really the big news here. But there's definitely coup, counter coup stuff going on here. We're not sure exactly what's happening, but it's big. Anthony Gucciardi, StoryLeak.com. You've been on this like nobody else here at the office since this came in with our source we've lost contact with. We've got about six minutes till the news ends. We're going to come back after the news with a special news bulletin to continue with this, but give folks the basics of why we're so concerned about this. So this is why this is so concerning and a breaking news piece that we're still yet to fully decipher, but today's research this is what we've found. So not only has Lindsey Graham come out and said, yeah, if you don't go to war with Syria and actually Iran as well, South Carolina will be nuked. But that same day beforehand, we leaked the intel specifically stating that the nuclear warheads were moving from Texas to South Carolina. To add matters to that and make it even more extreme, not only yes, do we have the second commander being fired, but the first commander being fired. And it later came out through these leaked emails, if you look at the Daily Mail piece, that the second in command was fired on the same day of the nuclear warheads transfer that we reported on. The exact same day, but that came out weeks later. So we couldn't have known that. The intel was right, 100%. We knew that, but we could not have even guessed that these guys would be laid off and fired and suspended and terminated until weeks later when they admit, yes, it happened on September 3rd, that day we reported it, but we didn't want anyone to know. And this happened in 2007 at Minot with two cruise missiles from North Dakota down to Louisiana, and it was a huge scandal, huge investigations. They were trying to steal these, is what our intel said. In fact, we were one of the first to report on it. This time it comes out, and it's not been picked up by the mainstream media, which is even more scary. And again, our source didn't know where they were going, exactly what was happening, just the general area. They just knew this was off the radar and highly illegal. Well, they said South Carolina specifically at the same point, Lindsey Graham said that there's something, a nuclear attack could happen. Yes, so, and he said South Carolina or New York. Yes, well, he said South Carolina, but it could go up into the New York area because it's a harbor, it's a big port, it's a big bay, it could go anywhere. 
But specifically, we knew South Carolina. Yes. That's what we knew. And then Lindsey Graham came out and said, yes, there could be an attack there. But what worries me the most, is most concerning to me that's the biggest point, is the Daily Mail piece where it says, yes, we, they didn't want to tell us about any of it, that we weren't supposed to really know. But then in the leaked section, it says, yeah, the email indicated that it actually happened on September 3rd. Again, that's the same day the nuke transfer actually was initiated. So these guys are being offed and terminated on the same day and that the top guy it turns out he was uh, terminated two days after another one so it just it goes on and on it's like these people don't want to play the game maybe they're whistleblowers maybe they didn't want to have a false flag scenario in south carolina and they're terminated from that and maybe just talking about this is also preventing it which is amazing but this also goes into this new thing this is breaking news here exclusive the guy that's firing all these people the head guy his name is uh, kowalski he made a statement in this department of defense online website here in an interview and he actually said nuclear weapons are strategic weapons they're political weapons so they're not just weapons of war he went on to talk about you know we have all these pound uh, 2,000 pound bombs and everything that's what master sergeants talk about but once you get to the level of senator and secretary of defense they talk about nuclear weapons he's saying that nuclear weapons aren't actually weapons of war anymore they're political strategic weapons that to me sounds like he's saying, he's holding the country hostage as we talked about before. This is the guy in charge firing all these generals who wouldn't go along with him. That's what we war gamed in early September last month that these could hold the country hostage. They're not supposed to be nukes at Dias since 86. Weldon Henson that works here was stationed there working on B-2 bombers and F-16s. He said there were bunkers they weren't supposed to go into. That's where these got pulled out, put on 18 wheelers. And again, South Carolina, they wouldn't say where specifically and they were like, well, this is illegal. There's no paperwork. And the base commander came out and said, hey, national security, it's an order. And there was a big issue there with security, the base security, the police, everybody were really freaked out. That's why this was leaked to the media, not just us, but to others. We went with it. Just like the, the Capitol SWAT team leaked to us, they were ordered to stand down at the Navy Yard shooting. Later, that came out in the BBC. Just like the Navy SEALs came to us about how they were being killed uh, a year before it came out in the mainstream media. This is real. This has got to be the most dangerous thing I've ever reported. My gut tells me that we're risking our lives doing this, but we've got to do it. It's our duty. And look at who they've put in now over all the nuclear weapons now that General Kerry's been removed. General Jack Weinstein, he looks like he's about 14 years old, and uh, so uh, he, he must uh, be following orders. Yeah, they're replacing the real experienced people with this guy, Jack Weinstein, who will go along and play ball. It's definitely obvious these older generals were either whistleblowers, they weren't going to go along with the plan. And it seems to me that basically he's saying that, yeah, nuclear weapons are not for war, they're political and strategic weapons. It sounds to me like they wanted to launch a false flag attack as a pretext to war in Syria and Iran as Graham was their little playboy to go out and say it, and then these guys would not go along with it. And it also means to me that if they were going to, as some people speculated, set these up as defense against Syria, which is unnecessary and, and moronic anyway, they wouldn't have an issue saying, yes, we relocated some of our bombs to protect ourselves or something. But this is definitely a political and strategic move, just like they said. The we're going to go to break and end the news because some stations carry it's got to end right now. We're going to come back for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers and continue to break this down and talk about some of the other news as well. Anthony, thank you. Folks, you've got to understand something out there. They love to hide things in plain view. Just like they've had all the Democratic strategists say a false flag would sure help us if there was a terror attack to blame the Tea Party. They put that in the Times of London, the I mean, Financial Times, Associated Press. And when he's going, you know, these aren't just military weapons. These are political weapons now. This is pretty creepy. So uh, that's it for this Friday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, with the Sunday radio show. And Lord willing, back on Monday, please pray for InfoWars, pray for Nightly News, pray for our great crew. And I also want to thank you all for your support. Please pray for America and free peoples everywhere fighting against tyranny. That's it for this edition. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. And we're back with this special report and extended coverage here on InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for spending your Friday with us and caring about 
the future course, not just of this country, but of the world. And we just, uh, before the main news show ended, broke down some of the facets, but we were rushed there in the six, seven minutes we had in that segment, Anthony Gucciardi. Uh, other issues, I mean, I just can't get over this new top general being put in there, and then the uh, general that's over him, he's the head general over all the nuclear forces, but the major general above him making creepy comments about the nuclear weapons are political as well. Uh, it's just over the top, the type of things that are happening. And they haven't really denied that nukes came up missing. Uh, you'd, you'd think that they would come out and dispute what we've said. Yeah, so when I actually called Dias Air Force Base, they first told me that it was illegal and against policy to even comment on the nuke transfer whatsoever. They said they can't comment on any nuclear... Strategy. They answered the phone and said we can't talk about the weapon transfer. Well, well that's, that's the second time. So I actually called and got this captain who said that she's never talked to me before. So apparently it was someone new who's never heard of this before. And I said, hey, this is Anthony Gucciardi. I want to ask you about a certain transfer. And then she said, oh, I can't comment about weapons transfers. But typically, if you're calling about a transfer, you're talking about a transfer of personnel. You're talking about a transfer of your son or daughter or something. And then she immediately responded and cut me off, I can't talk about weapons transfers. And that's when I started prying and saying, well, what do you- And, and we recorded this, it's clearly the same woman. So it's on YouTube, it's on the- Clearly uh, the same show. woman. Yeah, the same woman. And she was just going and saying, you know, we can't talk about that. It's against policy. It would basically be illegal if I even told you about nuclear transfers. And then on their Facebook page, after our readers went and overwhelmed them, they basically went on Facebook and said, it didn't happen according to our official website. So they give a, give a runaround answer and didn't say anything about it on the site. And then we have hundreds of emails coming in, even in my email, which I said once on air, it's talking about, you know, I'm working at Dias and I'm seeing all this crazy stuff go on. The commanders are fritzing and they're crazy and they don't know what's going on and everyone wants answers. We're demanding answers. They're not answering us. And then we're getting reports, unconfirmed reports, of course. Our actual high-level military intelligence is confirmed. But unconfirmed reports saying, I saw the trucks, you know, I saw them wrapping them up in a different mats and everything like that and transferring them off. There was four trucks. and I, Multiple emails said there were four trucks. Now, we're not going off that because we only go off confirmed intel. Sure, our source just said there weren't supposed to be nukes here. They pulled them out, and then it wasn't the regular trucks that, because there's other bases nearby that do have nukes. It wasn't even properly done, and then they said, don't worry about it. No signature whatsoever. And that's why we were contacted, and other media was as well. And you know, the issue is like every other time, uh, just like the Capitol SWAT team, as I mentioned, yeah. they went public to BBC too and said, we were ordered to stand down. It's like if you have cancer. And let's just say one of the symptoms is head pain. Okay, it could just be a headache, all right? Then the second symptom is, you know, pain right here in the sinuses. Okay, you could just have a sinus infection and a headache. And then you have a massive tumor coming out of your head. You might have cancer. And you're going blind. Yeah, exactly. You're going blind. You, you, you can't even stand You're hallucinating. Anymore. Yeah. The Graham thing was, you know, maybe the beginning of a, a cancerous stage that people were saying, you know, it looks like this might be Graham's right. like, we're going to be hit with nukes, yeah. unless you give your rights yeah. up. Mm -hmm. The second top nuke commander was the beginning of a tumor. We're walking around with a tumor on our head. At this the number point. two guy in command. Yeah, the number two nuke commander. Now, this guy, the commander, is the tumor is just pulling our head, the gravity of and it. And the quote was that they question his loyalty. Yeah. I mean, they're like, well, who, uh, to, to, to who? I mean, it's you... worse than that, though. They didn't just question his loyalty. It was about a specific task given, a temporary task given that he failed to do. And he was, uh, the second guy was removed on September 3rd, the same exact day of the transfer. And they kept that secret for two weeks. Yes. and they All this is happening the day we reported in like 1130 in the morning. And then Graham comes out. And then all hell breaks loose. And then two weeks later, they say he was, he was uh, suspended on September 3rd over some bogus charges. But... Once again, let's be clear, they didn't announce that until it was leaked. They would have never told us. And by the way, guys, just for listeners out there, because every time we talk about this, I see comments on YouTube or on Infowars.com saying there were never any missing nukes in 2007, much less in September of 2013. Guys, type in missing nukes, Minot. There's a Wikipedia on it. It's even on Wikipedia, yeah. But it has all the links to mainstream news. I don't just believe every Wikipedia. It has a bibliography. I remember covering at the time. Uh, you know, B-52 takes off from Minot, flies down to the Air Force Base in Louisiana, I forget the name. There's these high-tech cruise missiles that look like little stealth bombers that the radar can't see, and there's at least two of them. And then it's like no one can say why they were loaded unauthorized, because that's like totally illegal. And that's what people are freaking out here. They're not supposed to be nukes. There are nukes. The cops finally you climb up the thing, go, look, you're going to tell us where it's going at least. I don't care what the commander says. Something's wrong. They go, all we know is we're going to, you know, South Carolina. The truck driver just said, I don't know anything. I'm taking this to South Carolina. 
That's it. Yeah, and, and I don't know where it goes from there. So, so, uh, and and don't forget, the base commander was on site giving the authorization unsigned. So the base commander knew about this, and and it according to me, our source, it was freaked out. Source, according to our source, and it makes me think that the first guy was told to do it, but he wouldn't do it, and that's why he was suspended. They probably said, "Get out of here." You know, we're going to have someone that plays ball like this new guy, which we'll talk about. The second guy, I think, he was uh, suspended probably a couple days afterwards. I think he was just going to be potentially a threat, a whistleblower because he wasn't okay with maybe taking a nuke to South Carolina and doing something with it amid this Syria crisis. And by the way, I want to be clear. Yeah, because we had Graham holding us hostage. And we Attack Syria or a nuke's going to go off here in New York. And we said all of this, by the way, all of this would happen. We'd start seeing people fired or killed. We said this before, and they were holding us hostage. We said that verbatim in these videos, and now it's happening. And, and, and uh, this is not fun either. I mean, no. I want to be clear. We tried to say maybe they were dummies. Maybe it was a drill. Maybe it was self-defense from Israel, I mean, uh, Syria or Iran. Up front, we tried to speculate that maybe the, you know, our source, you know, who we believe, but maybe they were wrong. Maybe, maybe it was dummies. Maybe it was a drill. Maybe it was just a movement that they didn't want the Russians to know about because we've kept nukes back and they've kept nukes back. And then we find out that uh, that next night, or, or later that evening, wait a minute, Graham just made this statement. We and didn't then, find out till the following day. That's right. I'm going from memory. It was, it was the next day. And then we now learn that day they fired the number two general, and then now they fired the other general, and they don't want the media to release it. And I Usually when Graham, a general gets fired, it's all over the news. And I called Lindsey Graham on air. I don't think we put it on YouTube because uh, it was mostly uneventful, except for the secretary said she was really worried about his statements. I said, so he did stay that. And she said, yeah, well, we're trying to all figure it out. We're in a fluster right now. We're scared because we think we're going to get nuked if we don't attack Syria. And I said, so, so you actually looked into it. It looks like he said these things. She's like, yeah, we've been trying to call him all day. He won't respond. Well, it was in CBS News. Yeah, it was in CBS News. He definitely said it on record. A AP also covered it. But they were saying even they weren't alerted. Even his staff in D.C. weren't told, and his hometown staff, they had no idea what he, that, that was happening. Like, he didn't even alert them to it. Well, I mean, I want to be clear. We get a source confirmed saying, look, people are pretty freaked out. This is what happened. The cops were freaked out, too. There's private cops there. This person saw all this. Everybody said, well, get the base commander. He came out and said, no, no, it's authorized. Well, where's the paperwork? Big arguments. Yeah. And then just, hey, that's an order. And then, uh, and, and then as it was leaving, cops stopped it and said, we want to know where this is going. I mean, this, this was like a big scene reported. And it wasn't like we're going out and saying, this is a false flag immediately. We're just saying, hey, we need to put this out as information in case things develop, which I'm really glad we did. And then all hell breaks loose. I, yeah. I've been creeped out about this from the beginning. What do you think's going on? I really think they're, as you've said before in the video, to extrapolate on that, they're holding us hostage except it's an interior fight and infighting in the military complex. So I think there are good generals. In fact, I know there are good higher-ups. I don't know about generals, maybe lieutenant generals. I think they're removing everyone. We're seeing this with Obama, by the way, as well. They're removing higher-ups in the military across the board. It's not just this in some ways. Uh, but this is obviously related to the Dias incident. But they're removing other generals and other people across the board so they can get these bad guys in there. And I think they're putting this guy Jack Weinstein in because he'll play ball and he'll do what they want. And I think in this event, Graham is a stage boy to go ahead and say, yeah, if we don't attack Syria, we could be nuked. And he's fear-mongering that. But at the same time, I think they're crazy enough to do anything to get to Syria, to get to the Middle East and get their territory over there. So I think there's elements inside the military that are fighting against good elements inside the military. The good elements are saying, hey, we're not going to do this. We could maybe be evil, even uh, be whistleblowers. I'm forecasting we'll see more suspensions, more terminations, and suicides inside the military in the near future, coming months, and the bad guys will be replacing them. And we'll always be able to find something with these new people. So this is a globalist coup over the military. We know that's been going on for a long time. We know even the chairman of the Joint Chiefs went in and said you're not attacking Syria. But this is the tipping point. This nuke, this nuke transfer is the tipping point. Well, I mean, take Weinstein's boss, the Major General, who's over it all, saying, hey, we'll use these for political purposes. Kowalski, yeah. Uh, General Kowalski saying. Let's dig him up here. Literally, he says, nuclear weapons are strategic weapons. They're political weapons. And he goes on to talk about there are certain there missiles, you know, 2,000-pound bombs that military people would think about. I'm thinking of nuclear weapons in a political way. So he's saying that these are tools of politics. I mean, these are ways to, to get things done politically with nuclear weapons. And there are certain elements inside the military that don't want that. But I think 
I know that there are negative, evil people in the military. Kowalski's the lieutenant general. He's not the other guy's boss. No, we went over the to main guy, no, no. Kowalski is still doing firing, though, under... See, this is where it gets very... Yeah, here, here's the head guy. Where's here the major general? the guy. Here, here it is right Keller. here. Uh, this is the top guy here who's actually ahead of Kowalski. Kowalski's still extremely high up, and he's able to fire top new commanders. But this guy, Robert Keller, I believe his name is, he is the top. He could fire Kowalski. So this is the guy that's going ahead and saying, yes, making the calls and saying, yes, fire all these new commanders. Then Kowalski's going ahead. This is the guy that I believe fired the number one. This is the guy that put Weinstein in. Yes. And now Weinstein is in, and he's stationed at the Pentagon since 2009 from the research I did on that. And it looks like he's just been awarded a bunch of these different medals in Iraq and everything like that for following orders and doing the right thing. So I believe what they're doing is they're putting someone in that will listen to their every single word. Well, I know this. I mean, like you said, over 100 emails. People saying, oh, yeah, they're with the trucks. Big freak out. Now they're having drills here. I mean, they're literally freaking. They're freaking out, saying, please talk about this. Please talk about this. The thing is, though, we only talk about confirmed sources. We only put out confirmed sources. You know, we could put out and talk about the people that see the trucks and everything like that, but that's unconfirmed. The high-level military intelligence, that's what's so scary about this, is confirmed. He is real, and he has actual information that is pertinent. They to have. We all know it's a she. Uh, yeah, they, the uh, androgynous whistleblower, has information. <sighs> there was a graphic up on InfoWars yesterday. It's in my Twitter I want to show people in the in the real Alex Jones Twitter, if we can, a tweet from yesterday that shows the lapdog media to end this off here because it shows Obama and the cartoon is a lapdog with his tail wagging yeah. in his lap, and he says, "Good, play dead," and it's wagging its tail. No one in his hour-long press conference he had or other press conferences will ask about Obamacare not working. They won't even ask why doesn't it work. They just do whatever they're told now, and so it's not like I'm some great guy or you're some great guy. I guess we're just crazy enough to, to go ahead and cover things so whistleblowers come to us, but we're not crazy. Does everybody have to be a coward? Does everyone have to sell out? Does everyone have to just say, oh, missing nukes, no big deal. Oh, let's go play golf or something. I mean, it, that's what destroys civilizations is people just giving in to criminal mafias. Here is the ultimate proof the mainstream media is a lying Decepticon BS machine. Take, for example, the Constitution-free zones from the DHS. That piece I covered on StoryLeak, which at the time was just about two weeks old, got 140,000 shares on certain social media sites, uh, 20,000 shares on Facebook. It was like 500,000 shares on Tumblr. It was insane. I was getting millions of hits. And only Wired Magazine covered it. Why would the mainstream media not talk about something as crazy as the fact that within 100 miles of the border, that's Houston, Los Angeles, Philadelphia. And the government itself's calling it constitution free. It, you don't have a Fourth Amendment, yes, exactly. But the whole thing is you don't have a Fourth Amendment, it gets deeper, whereas it doesn't, you don't have the whole entire constitution. So the DHS reviewed itself and said, yes, you don't have a constitution on the border, which is 100 miles from the border, actual border, even including oceans. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just in itself sensational. And that's just like true. free speech zones, and that's like the, the TSA saying, we'll arrest you, you make jokes now. They're just saying, oh, you have rights. They exist in the phantom zone. But the key is But the you media. just can't get there. Everywhere else, there's no rights. But if the media was real, they would cover that, even if they were just money hungry. It just proves the ultimate goal is not money. Oh yeah, these are hot stories, is, is your point. Yeah, if they yeah this that. stuff is hot. This stuff is real. This stuff is important, but they won't do it because it's not about money. It's not about it's fame, not about it's money. not about coverage, it's not about freedom. That's why we're doing it. That's our main driver for them because they're bought and paid for. Yeah. At, a, at an elementary level, they say, you know, the corporations, the news media is driven by profit and profit alone. But if that were true, they would cover stories like this. They would cover stories like the Dias nuke. They would interview us. And I'm on some television shows, but like Fox News and stuff. They would they say, would you claim this is going on, you yeah, little liar. Yeah, but they won't even do that because they're not even profit driven. They are bought and paid for and they are driven by government. Because the profit is the private Federal Reserve that has unlimited money. Yeah. And as long as it runs the government, it doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. The whole reality, the free market, our families, it's all got to go for their fraud to take over. But the good thing is the real authentic media, we come in and we take it. We do the actual real stories and it's just blowing up. Yeah, but the question is, what are they going to do now? They're well, gonna they're going to build the NSA to shut us down, but then they can't even do that right because it's all mafia bid rigging, so it bursts into flames. We had this exact same conversation on air, I think, four months, three, four months ago, and I said Bloomberg specifically, to look at Bloomberg, they're becoming a fake alternative news. And around that time, they started doing all these pieces about how big banks are ruling the world. It's all watered down, but they're actually decent pieces about how we fund them with taxpayer money and stuff. They're going to pretend to be like us. 
They can't beat us, so they have to act like they're the new us. But Bloomberg wants to be dominant, so they get it. I've noticed yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. The smarter news agencies, CNN is not smart in this respect. The smarter news agencies like Fox, actually, and Bloomberg, and some of those like that, and uh, uh, there's a few other ones, but they'll act like they're alternative news. They'll be like, yeah, we're on your side. The big banks, you know, we love Occupy Wall Street. But Clatchy's. Yeah, exactly. They're be going to try and be us. That's why they already are copying our headlines over and over again, because they see that it's working, because that's what people actually want to hear. And then what they'll do, though, is the main thing will be like, yeah, we're funding the big banks. Gee, we should really get a new Congress or some new president. It's never like, hey, let's get rid of the Federal Reserve. It's like, gee, do you think a Republican would be a better answer? I think so. It's never the real answer. Well, I mean, I'll just say this in closing before I hit some other news, and I appreciate your analysis. Th my main driver is to have a free society down the road, and I almost want to censor myself and want to go slow and want to back off, but something in me says, look, you know this is a real source. You've got to report this. Navy SEALs come to us. They blow up our helicopter. They kill our body. We know it. This was a lookalike, bin Laden. All that's now come out. Cy Hearst says it's all fake. I... I don't like risking my life. I mean, it, it's not like some daredevil deal where I want to go jump buses on a motorcycle or something. That's basically what we're doing here. I mean, it's dangerous. And it's just by the grace of God, I'm still alive. That's why I, I think I'm still alive, though, because there's so many other alternative media people now that get it, like you and so many others, that, 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 that that's a good feeling. But it is scary to kind of be the tip of the spear. And, and I mean, I obviously, people wonder, Alex Jones must not be real. He's still alive. Why do you think this operation is still up and running? Because without it, then basically they have to start telling the truth. There is a market for truth. It's the fastest growing market. We can look at it even in the industry of food. GMO free food, organic food is the fastest growing trend right now, period. So at the same time, truth is the fastest growing trend. There will always be a percentage of people looking for the truth. And yeah, but why haven't they gone after me then? Let me explain. Well, they have gone after you in some ways, but at the well, same they tried time, to assassinate my name. No, it's and stupid if they killed you. It would make no sense. If they killed you, it would prove everything that we've said, and then people would be on the streets rioting. They have to adapt themselves to be like you. They will have, as they already have, I won't mention names, versions of you created in the media, high-paid individuals that will say things like you do, but with a, a much softer actual realization. So, for example, they'll say things like, the big banks are gutting us. It's because of Bush. The big banks are gutting us. It's because of Obama. And people will eat into that because it fits their paradigm. And it's also a little bit truth-telling. So what they do, to they, they steal, they hijack our alternative, real, authentic media. No, that's really true. But obviously the NSA gridded in everything. It is watching what we're doing and what's going on. It's sitting there tracking it all, trying to figure it out. But I think all it's really figuring out is how destructive it is and how it's going to destroy their children and their own future. I mean, here's the thing. I'm talking to the New York Times about potentially an interview, and they're confused and they don't understand. They don't know how to put an angle on it because they're asking me, how did you get so big without 500 employees and $5 million? How did you start from your apartment years ago with a natural health website that's now the third largest, with Story, uh, Story Leak, working with Alex, doing all this stuff, doing product lines? How did you do that? We don't get it. And the answer I tell them is I'm literally just telling people the truth. I'm telling them what they want to know, talking about things that matter, and they think that's a lie. They don't get it. They said, yeah, really, but you know, how much money, how many millions of dollars did you put into this? They don't get it, that the truth is viral. I mean, the truth is viral. You can go on Facebook now and share something that's truthful, a photo with a quote, and get five million shares. Uh, people like Coke and Pepsi have to pay millions of dollars to even reach one one hundredth of the percent. That's when I told Politico years ago when they were trying to defeat Rand Paul, I said, if you want to destroy him, endorse him. But I go, you can't do that because you're too arrogant and you still think you're in control. I mean, they literally are mentally ill. And they don't get that even if they've dumbed the public down, at the level of people that are thinking, no one buys what they say anymore. No one. And they're sharks, too, so they don't think of people as actual free individuals with a heart, mind, and soul. They just see it as, these are people that we need to pay money to reach. You know, we have to make stuff up to reach. That's right. They see you as an economic unit, as, as a... Harvesting factor to, to take ration. Yeah, they call you a human resource yeah. openly in your face. Uh, the IRS calls citizens inventory. Zombies, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are inventory. Actually, they call us inventory uh, uh, technically. Well, you know, and the NSA, it leaked that the NSA was referring to iPhone users as zombies. That was a leaked document from the NSA. That's right. 
But all they're doing is turning themselves into zombies as well. What they don't get is when they address a human like they're dumb, it may dumb them down in a feedback loop, but it dumbs them down as well. And then people get hungry for people to really talk to them. They get hungry for something real, something not scripted. And that's why they looked to people like us who are going to tell them the reality of what's going on and not speak to them like they're five-year-old babies. Well, notice the attack profile is always, we're real, we're sold out, we're agents, we're lying, we're manipulating, I'm not legitimate, I'm not bona fide, I'm not real, I'm not, because they know it's real. Yeah. They got it all tapped, they're watching it, and they're going, I, I want to be real. Because I've talked to people in the government at all levels. Th they hear it and go, actually, that's true. And then they kind of get uncompartmentalized, go, this is really a screw job. Why do we want to be part of this? It's almost like a peer pressure system, a train to hell. Why don't we all just get off of it? Well, I mean, they should ask themselves that. Yeah, I mean, it's like when we went to the NSA, when we approached them, the guy was like, he didn't even understand that a peasant would walk into the NSA and just start filming them and asking them questions and checking them and interrogating them. He was so blown away, like, you people are slaves. You, yeah. You're scared of me. Uh, uh, you're behind the curtain, Toto. But he actually was desperately afraid of me. Because you would think that he would think I'm a little peon and he could just crush me under his boot. He was, like, actually afraid of me. That's why he let us go. And that's why he wouldn't arrest me. I said, are you going to arrest me? It was almost invoking him to arrest us. And he said, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to. Then the other guys came and threatened us with the dogs and everything. I said, are you saying that dog is going to kill me? And he's like, well, they were afraid of me. He might. Even though we didn't have cameras on at some point of that. Uh, well, you were they were afraid because you were breaking the facade. Hey, we're just media nice here to talk to you. What? You're a terrorist. Nobody talks to me unless they're bad. Yeah, exactly. But once you start groveling to them, then they actually believe, you know, that's so that's standard. That's what they believe. When a cop pulls you over, you need to grovel to them. And that's what they anticipate. But when you actually respond in a way that a real actual human should or have a real conversation with an officer, have you ever had done that? And they're just like, wow, they, they actually enjoy it and they respect you. It's Breaking the psychological programming is key to success in all forms. And that's why the TSA says, you don't talk to us, we'll arrest you. Yeah, because you can unprogram their employees. And that's what they're afraid of. Exactly. They're afraid of us infiltrating the Borg system by even saying one word. You know, even saying, hey, you know, this is actually against the Constitution. If you have a real good conversation with someone and treat them as a human being, and I think that's what we do with our videos, it'll work. It, it, speaking to someone like a human being works, not today on the radio, something happened, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's all programming, but when you speak to them as if we were having a conversation, like we are right now, if you're speaking to the audience, the mm -hmm. listener, as a human being, and that someone you actually value, it activates their brain. That's right. That's why everything they do is about keep calm, sleep, friend, don't worry, there's nothing bad. There were no secret testing on people. DU's not bad. Obamacare's working great. Now don't listen to the races. I would challenge everyone to go on YouTube and look at the 9-11 coverage for CNN and Fox. And when the plane hit the building... It was all perfectly scripted, in line, clearly staged. You can tell. Not that they were in on it, but they were already loaded, no. teleprompters, ready yeah, to go. Yeah, that too, but the psychological programming was still in effect even when something traumatic like that happened. I was trying to think of a good example. Like, think of when the second plane hit the building. They were like... Don't worry, it's probably still an accident. It's probably not a big deal. It's okay. Okay, we, we our officials have not told us yet. Everyone should be... We have to wait till they come. And meanwhile, then the police are... Don't saying, think for yourselves. Yeah, stay calm. Don't run away. Don't worry about all that ash coming in with mercury vapors. It's okay. They say that's good for you. Yeah, so it's like, in any scenario, thinking for yourself is weird. But then they all come on every channel 50 minutes later. We have the answers. Bin Laden did it. You're not Very gonna have calmly. Your, you're not going to have your rights anymore. Don't be scared, we'll save you. That's why they insult people that are real like us because we actually have emotions and we care about things and we tell people, no, run away from the mercury vapors, run away from the towers, get out of there right now after the first plane hit. There were people standing there saying, wow, some plane accidentally hit the buildings. Even if it did, you want to get out of there, but they were saying, stay calm, it's okay. That's the programming. Because they want you in, I mean, that's why they're banning sports everywhere. I I'm against watching the sports, but I'm all for playing them. And I was reading the psychological studies by the guy that invented the Olympics in 1914, the modern one, this French aristocrat. He said, we need to have this as the new religion, but also to have soldiers. We should have the military class play games to be tough, but, you know, not anybody else, basically. And then, and then Hitler picked up on that. to be. And so now they go, no, no, don't learn how to fight back. We have men with machine guns for that. Well, why do you think the highest paid gladiator in today's dollars was paid millions of dollars? back in those days. It's because that's what it's all about. The programming is 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 reinstituted every single moment of every single day.
You know, you wake up with your fluoride toothpaste. You're already dumbing yourself down. You know, when you're eating your eggs and you put some salt on it, there's no iodine in it. It's et cetera, et cetera throughout the entire day from the actual health standpoint to everything else. And that's why when we put the puzzle pieces together, when we look at, for example, the constitution-free zones, people say, how is that related to the sodium fluoride? People say, how is that related to the programming that's going on in the media? It's all part of the system to make you docile and stupid. And that seems elementary to some people, but you have to realize It's a it. total war against individualism because then the elite can't run us like robots. And it's elementary. We come up with a sledgehammer and just shatter the glass, and they're like, how could you do that? That was racist. Well, they're in the box. We're shattering the box and blowing up the box with dynamite, and then the other reporters from the New York Times who probably get paid, you know, tons of money to go write about kitties and trees and stuff come and they're like, how how do you get a hundred times more viewers? Because it's all written to kill journalism and kill muckraking so nothing can threaten the system. It's all just bland. Oh, you get more access to abortions now in California that says a guy can do it in the back alley with a coat hanger. He's yeah, given yeah. liability protection. Overturning just, just it's, it's so dangerous. It reminds me of the headline I was researching Syria. I don't remember it offhand, but to paraphrase, basically Obama had signed secret orders to arm the Syrian rebels, which is something I was really passionate about because they go around beheading Christians in public squares and they all cheer and bathe in the blood and drink the blood. And it was called something like, Obama releases authorization for Syria. And it was like, Obama authorizes secret support for Syrian rebels since 2011 and offers them millions of dollars to buy heavy ammunition to destroy tanks. But the, the headline was like, Obama approved authorization for Syria. It wasn't, it wasn't exactly that, but it was so boring. No one would click that. But then they have something like, you know, a shooting, deadly assault shotgun, like the CNN article, kills and maims Population children. runs in fear, begs for answers. Here's a mother. When, it's you gun owner's fault. Manipulating, manipulating. So it's like anything that is establishment is docile. Anything they want to be traumatic is traumatic. The images of the shooters over and over and over and over again, the aspects of how deadly and bloody and violent it is, or how about the knife-stabbing person? They didn't even want to talk if about kids, that. If kids play at recess, they might get hurt. Yeah. Dangerous people playing... But, you know, drones killing you, that's no big deal. That's fine. Drones bring security. Yeah, and the whole, the whole food system as well. So it's basically, you can look at what they want you to do and determine if something is well, real. Well, it's like the FDA. You know, deadly GMO chemicals, additives, plastics in the food, no problem. Good for you. Baby's dying, bad formula. But, oh, vitamin C might give you diarrhea if you ate too much. It's bad. We're going to arrest you if you quote the Nobel Prize winner saying it could help cancer. And Michelle Obama goes on the Food Network and, and she has this healthy eating guide that says nothing about GMOs, nothing about artificial sweeteners, nothing about anything. Just says, there's too much fat in that, honey. And she gives it to a kid and she's teaching. Which again, them. the real healthy fats are actually good for yeah, your they're brain. Good. The whole, the whole you must stuff. have them, IQ, everything, it's on record. They're like, fat all bad, trans fat good. Bad. It just goes into the programming though. Literally now we're at the point where fat means fat. I mean, they can't understand that that's a different type of, of uh, utilization for the body at all. It's just, if it has fat in it, it means that makes you fat. That's how low we are. And that's, for example, two things now actually. The Fukushima disaster, no one cares about it because radiation is invisible. If radiation was a big pink puffy cloud, people would care about it because they would see it. The Obamacare system, they can't understand the coding of the website and how flawed it is and how it's going to ruin everything because they don't understand what code even means. It, it, it's not the listeners. The listeners understand this, but the general public doesn't even understand the most basic, rudimentary. Values. Well, no, that's why the ten percent that think they've signed up, it came out today, didn't. They, they, but they they're, still they're think just they doing do. a poll. They go, "We have a poll. Did you sign up?" They're like, "No, I did." Exactly. They're like, "Good, it's free now." But, and then they'll be by themselves when they go to the hospital and are told it isn't, and no one's going to listen to them. No, but they'll get off on it and they'll say, "You don't support Obamacare. You don't want free health care for everyone." It's this programming that. If you follow the system and you go with that docile and traumatic programming and you work on it, you can basically do what Eddie Vedder says and say anyone that supports guns is horrible and killing children. And but meanwhile, he has armed bodyguards. Of course, because that's not... That, you He's know, like, I'm worth $100 million. I get bodyguards and guns. You don't. I hope violence happens to you. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, how liberal. He hopes violence if we protect ours. That sounds like... A Listen, we've gone too long here, even though it's an overdrive at all this news. I wanted to get to here. Great job. Uh, great job, Mr. Gucciardi. Storylink.com. Uh, folks, again, that is an extended hour plus long InfoWars nightly news tonight. I want to just run over a few of these headlines because I promised to do it and then shut down this transmission until the Sunday radio show comes back. But look at this right here.
Cops, 15-year-old charged with kidnapping after impersonating deputy and attempting to strip search a woman coming in her house. Well, he just ought to wait a few years, become TSA. He can do it in front of everybody. Call it security. Again, uh, American satisfaction with government sinks to all-time low. Oh, that's not nice. Why are you so successful? I mean, you're, you're, you're criticizing us. That's unpopular. IRS White House officials. Look at this woman. Looks like a Monty Python man in drag. White House officials that shared confidential taxpayer info hundreds of times, hundreds of visits with the White House. I mean, this is just beyond anything Nixon can imagine. Here's another one. Establishment GOPers assail Tea Party because it's the real opposition pointing things out. That's AP. Zuckerberg that calls his users. He goes, hey, they trust me. They're dumb effers. Imagine like these idiots trust me. <laughs> now let me do a pump and dump on them. <laughs> let me steal the system I use to do this anyways. <laughs> Let me go to Bilderberg group meetings. <laughs> Let me give the technology to Al-Qaeda to overthrow all these countries. <laughs> so there's that. Mark Zuckerberg buys four houses near his uh, Palo Alto home because he wants privacy, the article goes on to say. But, he, but you don't get yours. Just like Eddie Vedder gets bodyguards, but you can't have a gun to protect yourself. Just like he gets private jets. Now ben Affleck says, how dare you not want to be grown up with the TSA? Turns out he only flies private jets. Same deal. See, these people are just totally disconnected from reality. Here it is. Uh, EU may declare abortion a human right. And here it is. California Brown signs bill permitting non-physician abortions. I should go to McDonald's to get them now. So uh, there you go. But there's Eddie Vedder's quote. There's Eddie Vedder's quote. He says, uh, he says that uh, the time has come. Eddie Vedder, lead singer Pearl Jam, has come out against gun owners and almost wishes bad things to happen to them. Isn't that just, isn't that just sweet? Good old government demo side. White House takes down White House visitor logs, blames Republicans. Yes, because you don't want to know about all the IRS powwows you're having 24-7. And then, of course, the head general over the nukes saying uh, they're not a political weapon. And, of course, the lapdog media doesn't want to know where the weapons have gone. So that's it for this extended InfoWars nightly news. Lord willing... We will be back Sunday with the syndicated radio show. You can see the free video feeds at infowars.com forward slash show or subscribe to prisonplanet.tv and see it all and support the very front lines of real journalism and folks that are crazy enough to actually not want to be slaves and grovel to people and they actually want you to be able to have guns to protect yourself. Amazing. That's it for this transmission.